All right, we just submitted our first proving ground. So now when we look at unit modules, we're on to the next unit, unit seven. We are going to learn how to do animations. And the animations we're going to learn to do are frame by frame. We're going to design them as a nine frame storyboard and it needs to feature in nine frames, keyframes, a transformation. That means a change of state from beginning, middle to end. The only thing we're doing in this unit is working on this, but it takes some time. So to showcase a transformation like this, it needs to end differently than it began, right? But then you can set it to reset at the beginning. Your requirement is that it's a transformation based nine keyframe animation. You can build a lot more frames than that. Mine will probably be around 50 frames, but the nine frames tell the story, right? We start by sketching it, and the other requirement is that it needs to feature at least one thing you've already designed or made for the class. You can use multiple things. So for this morning section, I usually demonstrate with my fantasy creature and my fantasy landscape. So this is an example of a creature being animated in that landscape. And it looks like a really simple concept for an animation. It just looks like the creature is walking across. That's called the walking test but that doesn't meet that transformation requirement. So what actually happens is this stone rolls in and then transforms, like unfurls itself into the creature, and then it does a walking test, and then it closes itself up as a transforms back into that rock before the animation resets. So what does the storyboard show? It shows that we establish the scene, and then we introduce the character, un unrolling itself from the rock and then the action is it walks through and then it you know sets to reset at the end and then these are the three components we're going to be posting first our sketch which we want to do as homework we'll be talking about that refining it beginning of next class posting it then we're going to be working on our animation once we're finished with our animation we're going to pick nine keyframes from it so like film stills from it to tell the story in a sequential kind of comic book form that's good for a print portfolio along with the animated GIF file. In the afternoon class, I'll demonstrate with the emoji project, exercise two, which is a really fun one to do because they're all clean vector shapes. And you guys can use anything you want as long as it's from something you created. You could use your cartoon jumble, you can use your emoji, you could use your, your fantasy landscape, your fantasy creature. You can add any other things to it. You know, you can make them all um, in a dance competition with uh, a plushy dinosaur as long as you're using something that you've created as part of your animation. So here you see the rough storyboard sketch in nine square panels. What is the transformation? The transformation is mainly its eyes and then that these hearts develop, right? The tongue isn't so much a transformation. The tongue is a reveal. So a transformation is a change of state. It's not just changing expression, right? I did this this semester. We had that Texas uh, freeze. And my little Psyduck kind of character gets frozen. That's the transformation. And then slowly, slowly, slowly thaws out as the sun comes back up. So sometimes it's a transformation of character, sometimes it's a transformation of the setting, sometimes it's both. Some other examples. To be effective, they just need to be really, really clear. Like what's the actual transformation? How is it featured? Lots of examples. Now of all of these, there's only, there's only, I'd say, only one of them, I'd say, that's actually a transformation. Which one is it? Of these nine. Yeah, actually, I would say that's a transformation. You're right. So I'd say there's two. This one? So it looks like it is, right? But it actually never does transform. 
If it did this and then went through this and then did another shape, that would be a transformation. Because remember, a transformation is a change of state. So it goes beginning, middle, but then back to beginning instead of beginning, middle, end. Top left, yeah. You guys see how that's a transformation? M mainly in the colors. Like it reveals the eye opening. The eye opening alone wouldn't be enough. But that change of colors is. And I'd say that this, yeah, this extreme distortion is as well. But flipping the hair isn't, changing expression isn't. These are really fun. <laughs> Lots of creative ways of doing transformations. I love these things. And then this is a professional artist, digital artist, uh, Evan Cohen, who not only does them in print form and kind of sells books and calendars and things, but also is clean animation files. But you can see that his print form is clearly like working through the idea for the cleaner animation. So these are, this is what's called an animatic. That's from your storyboards. These are just nice little subtle transformations of environment that can be used. And so on and on. So how are we going to do this? Well, I, I got to pick what I'm going to use that I've already created. And I am going to use, it's going around the classroom, my little storyboard sketch, but I'll show you, I'll just do a quick digital sketch here, though it takes longer than it needs to. I'm going to create a new folder for assignment three. And I'm going to create in Photoshop a new file just for digital sketching. And yeah, I'll just use this standard. Okay, so in your sketchbooks, what you're going to do is sketch very loosely, just like I showing you on the index card that's going around the room. Three squares at the top with space in between. Those are the gutters. You can think of it as a comic book, but it's a comic book with all the same frame size because this is what's called a storyboard. So we are composing basically for social media for kind of an Instagram post, square format. And we're not doing more than nine frames because if we try to tell a story that requires more than nine frames, we won't have the time or resources to complete it. This keeps our transformation very focused. You need three things for a transformative animation. And I'd say for any kind of animation. First, you need the idea of character. Character is the thing you tell the story through. Sometimes character can be the setting. So if I have a tree in a landscape, but in my story, my tree gets hit by lightning, catches on fire, turns to ash, then the tree is the thing that the viewer is experiencing the story through. The tree is the character. Right? The next thing you need is setting. So if I just showed a tree with just empty white space around it, and I showed it get hit by lightning, turn to ash, catch on fire, you still imagine a setting for that tree. So you want to be in control of that as the artist. There's lots of ways to establish a setting, even if it's empty space. And then the third thing you need is the illusion of time passing or of transformation. And I say illusion because no matter what type of animation you're using, it is a sequence of still images. The illusion comes from playing them in a time-based way and controlling how long you see each image, usually for a fraction of a second. In comics, the illusion of time passing is as you pass over this gutter, what you're passing through is time. So when I start, this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. I am going to start by establishing, I'm going to grab my card. by establishing my landscape, my setting. And that just means I show it, right? So that's gonna be my, my setting. You can use a blank setting, you can use any setting you want. My setting is gonna be from assignment one. It's this lollipop landscape, right? That I just improved. So I just do a little sketch, this is my setting. And it's got this tower of cupcakes. Next, I'm going to introduce I and T my character, my character is my little 
what did I call it? My beaked gerbil, right? This guy. So what he's going to do is he's going to just drop from above like a hailstorm. And as they drop, they're going to impact the setting. And what's actually going to transform is the setting. I'm going to start knocking things out of the setting, like knocking teeth out of a mouth. And then that's it. And then at the end, my setting is going to be really blank, like everything's going to be gone. Storyboards often have arrows to show the direction you want to animate things. And they need to have a beginning, middle, and end. So in the beginning, we have a serene setting. In the middle, we have these, this character dropping from the sky, hitting parts of the, of the landscape, and those things being knocked down out of frame. And in the end, we have an empty landscape. And then I'm going to set it to reset, which means all of these parts that got knocked out are going to grow back. But I don't need to put that on the storyboard because that's just how I set it to reset as a loop. And that's my idea. And mine are largely inspired, and I'd recommend you uh, research him, by Terry Gilliam's animations for Monty Python. He was an American animator. He's the only American in the Monty Python troupe. And he would constantly do these kind of animations that were just really quick gags, using photographs, using his own drawings. And these would be traditional, but they work really well as, as digital animations too. But remember, they need to feature a transformation. Some of them feature a transformation more than others. And they're, they're always kind of really glitchy, like GIF animations are. Because we're not going to be doing a full 24 frames per second. We'll do more like four or five frames per second. So this is a nice example of a transformation of the setting. Right. All right, that's it. So please come to class with that sketch. And I will post mine to remind you and post all the videos, including this one. Beginning, middle, end. Nice work today.